Greetings, Alafiani. Good morning, almost good afternoon to all of my loyal listeners, callers, viewers. This is the Ilosha Olaomi Akala Tunde, and this is Got to Be Oshun Radio, um, radio that you've got to listen to. All right. It is wonderful to be here. I am very excited to be here. I'm in the process of doing some very serious manifesting right now. So keeping my energy high, keeping my energy positive, keeping my meditations consistent, and keeping my body and my mind pure. So my starter has gone out in my minivan in the in the got to be Oshun mobile. So I'm having to manifest what I need in order to um, repair that. So if you are in Georgia and you're a mechanic or you know someone who is a reliable and trustworthy mechanic hit up and let her know on facebook it got to be oshu the number two instead of the word to and i'm just manifesting to get um all of the things that my children and i need at this time we're moving into a new unschooling year and we've got to get all of the items needed for that so the way that i handle my life and my world is i use what our ancestors call Iwure, and that means to pull Ire. Um, this has also been translated as prayer, translated as invocation, trans incantation. This is the way that I live my life. So in the process of manifesting, so keeping that energy high. At the top of the show, as always, you heard the voice of my beautiful, powerful, revolutionary sister, Indrani. Please check her out at Indrani Music. That is her um, award-winning hit from Barbados, Fire Wata. And it is a revolutionary battle cry that t says that we must take back our power. That is what the show, that's what my life, that's what my destiny is all about. So hope that I am assisting you in doing that through the show. Um, I have to, um, as always, give thanks and honor and praise to my Ori, which leads me and guides me, my head, my highest self. Thanks and honor and praise to my mother, the womb that brought me here, Lalita F. Morgan, who is now an honored ancestor. Thanks and honor and praise to her mother, Nanny Meg um, Caldwell Fields, the womb that brought us all here, and to her mother before her and my mother's all the way back, the totality of force in the universe. Thanks, honor, and praise to those wounds that brought the all forth. Ashe, 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 oh. Honor and praise to all of my righteous ancestors. Honor and praise to all Olorisha, all of those who have been initiated into the science of Orisha and who are about the business of bringing about the good condition on Earth Mother Omile. Honor and praise to UNIOV Temple here in Atlanta. Honor and praise to Ile Tiwalade here in Atlanta. Honor and praise to Egbe Oshun Oreye Yeo, who recently this past weekend had a very beautiful Oshun festival here in Atlanta, Georgia. Praise and honor to my spiritual teachers, Ialosha Shango Iniola, and um, Matahochi Kofi Omowale Zanu, Nochito Wibi Zanu, who are now honored ancestors. Honor and praise to Kabiesi the first Oba Adefumi, who is now honored ancestor. Honor and praise to Kabiesi the second, who now reigns and presides over our home village in the in North America, Oyotunji. So we don't want to ever start anything without giving praise and honor and respect to our elders and to those forces upon whom we stand and upon whom we rely. Praise and honor to Obatala and praise and honor to Yeye Oshun, my mother, Oreye Yeo. All right, today we are completing possibly, if we need to not complete it, we won't, but we're um, going to try to complete the discussion of domination and submission and whether or not that is necessary in relationships. Um, we began talking about this actually the week before last when my sister Aisha Nura called in and asked me to speak on it. She gave it to me as a topic. And so um, I talked about it last week, spent the, devoted the entire show to it, and we did not get to exhaust the subject in the way that was satisfactory to me. So I said we will discuss it again this week. Um, I want to start with the question that my sister Malika posed, and that is that most women 
who are being submissive are doing so um, because they feel like this is a biblical charge. There is a verse in the Bible that says, wives be submissive to your husbands. And she called in and asked a question, you know, um, what did I think or how would I respond to being told that it's a biblical charge? And she also asked, what does it look like when no one is dominating and no one is submitting in a relationship? So I began to address that last week, but since I have a little more time now, I wanted to move into addressing that this week as well. Um, saying that it is a biblical charge. Okay, let's begin with that. First, we have to deal with the fact that the Bible as we know it today is not a pure and useful and uplifting and holy document. That is not what it is. The Bible began simply as a group of scrolls that was carried around by scribes in ancient times. That's what it began as. And there were many scrolls that the scribes would keep with them in their bags and just walk around and teach to those who wanted to learn from those scrolls. Now, at the Council of Nice, this is what occurred after the Greco-Romans accepted Christianity. They then create this council at Nicaea. And at the Council of Nice, um, you have a group of Greco-Roman patriarchal, destructive um, madmen determining which of these scrolls would stay in the Bible and which would be left out. So in the current version of the Bible that we have, the, the um, determination as to which groups of ancient wisdom we got and which groups of ancient wisdom was discarded was made by a group of Greco-Roman madmen. And I talk about them all the time and the types of lifestyles that they led and what they are leading people to who are foolish enough to continue to follow their way of life as a way of life. So we have this group of people determining what's going to be left in. Now, after that, then you have a translation out of Greek because it was originally written in um, Amoraic and in, from that they translated it into Greek and then out of Greek into English being done by King James, you know, a well-known child molester. And so he um, translated what we have now in English. Um, and most of the Hebrew terms were translated incorrectly. You know, there's a lot of controversy around terms such as Elohim and things like that. So when you talk about taking information from this book and using this to live your life, my first question to you would be, why are you doing that in the first place? As a person of African descent, as a person of, of Earth Mother's majority people, why are you following this book that has been tampered with and that has had all of this destructive energy placed in it? That, and that's actually question number two. Question number one would be, why are you choosing to follow a God that requires your opp oppression? A God that is a warlord. Is not a loving, kind, beautiful deity sent here to make the, the earth better, but who, according to his own word, is jealous and takes pleasure in smiting others and doing things of that nature. He's sitting on high waiting to smite you down. Why, why are you following that particular deity? So those would be my questions to someone who says, well, this is a biblical charge. Obviously, in that book, they, what they want is for one to dominate and one to submit. This is the Greco-Roman way of life. So yes, that's what is put in that book. And remember we discussed last week that from a Greco-Roman perspective, they had to break everyone down into the category of us and other. Women are considered other. Therefore, it is okay to oppress them. It is okay to abuse them. It is okay to require their oppression. So... That, that would be my answer to whether or not it is a biblical charge. Of course it's a biblical charge, but what in the world does that have to do with how you live your life? The Bible at best is the oral history of the Hebrew people, whoever they happen to be. And, and nobody knows who they are. They haven't, you know, made themselves known in any sort of way that is historically, that can be proven to be historically correct. So at best, that's what it is. At worst, it is a destructive tool in the hands of the oppressors created to make you think that your oppression is something holy. 
created to keep you in the position of slavery because you believe that your slavery is demanded of you by God. And then so what I ask of you is, why in the world are you worshiping a, a God that demands that you be a slave? Why are you doing that? Why do you see, see yourself as having such little power in the universe? Why do you think so small of yourself? That, that's my personal question. Okay, what does a household look like when there is no domination and there is no submission? We began to talk about this last week, and we can get more into it now. What a household looks like is it looks equal, it looks peaceful, it looks loving, and it looks infinitely powerful. Whatever your area of expertise is, you should be leading and guiding in that area. There is no set definition of who should always lead and guide. If I am better at budgeting, then I should be the one leading and guiding the monetary decisions. If you are better at nutrition, then you should be the one leading and guiding our eating practices, our dietary practices. If I am a better person at sewing clothing, then I should be the one determining what we're going to wear. If you are better at decor and making sure that the vibration of the house is uplifted um, according to the furniture that's in it, then you should be the one leading and guiding in that area. Whatever is your area of expertise, that is where you lead and guide in that area. There does not have to be, in any relationship, any set head. As a mother, I learn from my children every day because I take the time to listen to what they say. If I determined myself some sort of set head based upon my age, then I would have lost out on so much information. For example, right now, if you go to my Facebook page, Got To Be Oshun, the number two, Got To Be, and the letter B, Oshun, O-S-H-U-N, you can see a beautiful flyer that was created by my 17-year-old daughter. Now, if I had deemed myself some sort of lord that ruled over her because of our age difference, then I would not be able to reap the benefits of such beautiful productions as that. It is not necessary to dominate someone. The desire to dominate comes out of the feeling of not having control over your own life. Any adult that feels themselves to be in control over their own life does not have the desire to dominate others. Those who suffer from the desire to dominate others do not feel that they have control over themselves. And so being African in America, being members of an oppressed group of people, we have a tendency to want to control those around us because we do not feel that we're in control of our own lives. And with good reason, with good reason, if you think about the way that our ancestors came to be here, and if you think about the way that our ancestors who were already here were treated, then with good reason, we don't feel ourselves to be in control of our lives. But this is a mindset that we must heal from. We must not fall into the trap of trying to pretend that this mindset is good, that this mindset is positive, and definitely not trying to pretend that this mindset is holy. There is nothing holy, good, or uplifting about dominating another person. That isn't good. It can't help to move us toward bringing about the good condition. And as I say, and I always say, and will continue to say, the reason for life is divinity. You are here to become divine, to return to divinity. The Odu says human beings become Orisha. That is what you're here to do. You are here to become Orisha. So if your actions are not moving you towards that divine self that you know you are, that you can feel that you are from the inside, then you know that those are improper actions. If those actions pull you away from that, then you know that those are improper actions. Human beings are inherently good. If we are left alone, if we are not placed in oppressive situations, if we are not placed in toxic situations, look at how human beings interact and react with each other when they are merely left alone. 
view the lives of those of our brothers and sisters who are fortunate enough to still remain in the rainforest, who are fortunate enough to still remain in the bush. View the lives of those people. See how sweetly and how kindly they treat each other. And I'm not saying that's this perfection. I'm not saying there's never any disagreements or never any evil. But for the most part, view the lives of those people and look at that sweetness and that kindness and that purity. That's real human interaction. Human beings are inherently good. Domination and control is not required. It's not required for your children. It's definitely not required for your women and sisters. It's not required for your men. Domination and control is not necessary. Human beings are inherently good. If you treat a human being with love and with kindness and with tenderness, and they are a healed individual, they will respond to you in kind. There's no, there's no other way for it to happen. If you, if you put that out, that is what you're going to get back. There's no other thing that can happen. Now, if you're dealing with someone who isn't healed, then be aware that by treating them with love and with kindness, you're healing them. You're helping in their healing. But they may not be at the point in their life when they're able to respond to you with the same thing. But that doesn't change the fact that human beings are inherently good. I was, um, I actually had that once as a status on my Facebook page, human beings are inherently good. And I was asked if that is the case, then why do we see human beings doing such horrible things to one another? The majority of the horrible things that we do are based upon the fact that all of the resources that we need in order to live life are locked up. If the resources were freed up, if food was free, as it is supposed to be, Earth Mother Onile gives it to us freely, then there would be no need for people to steal. If shelter was free, there would be no need for people to rob and steal. If love was able to be given as freely as it is felt, then people would not rape. People would not do horrible sexual things to other people. This only happens because we feel that love is locked up. So because we feel that the resources that we need are locked up, this is why we act outside of ourselves and act less than human. But domination and submission, if, if you say what is necessary to dominate people in order to make them act properly, then my question to you would be, how has that worked out for us? For the past three or four hundred years when we've been trying that as a lifestyle, because this, this is a new lifestyle on Earth Mother Only Lay. This isn't old, this is not the ancient way. So for the past three or 400 years that human beings have tried to dominate and control one another, how has that worked out for us in comparison to all of the millions of years before when nobody was doing that? In comparison, you have to say that we were doing much better as a species when we were loving each other when we were treating each other with love and respect, and when we were understanding that all of life deserves respect. All of life deserves the same respect that you expect others to give to you. So when we say that, we mean the lives of children. We mean the lives of women. We mean the lives of those yet to be born, of those waiting to be born. Yes, we include them too. That's still life. We mean plant life, we mean animal life, we mean the very body of Earth Mother Onile herself and the womb universe. All of this life deserves to be treated with respect, with kindness, and with love. And when human beings were free and left alone to do that, life flourished, love flourished, kindness and sweetness flourished. Once we were forced, because we had to be forced. So once we were forced into this lifestyle of domination and submission, then we found ourselves in this destructive cycle that was still useful. Um, this destructive cycle is based upon trying to live a lifestyle that is unnatural trying to live a lifestyle that is wicked and that is in itself, in and of itself, destructive. I have two callers on the line, but neither one of them are asking to, um, to speak.
So just so you guys know, you have to, I think you have to hit one in order to speak to the hostess. So if you want to speak, hit one. If you don't, then it's fine. I'm not saying that you have to. So that is the meat to me of that message of domination and submission, whether or not it's necessary. Obviously it isn't. It comes from a source of a group of people who, by all intents and purposes, were an abused group of people who never healed and then were left in charge of, of a society. This is what you have to be, you know, thinking about when you think about Greco-Roman culture, and which is the foundation for Western culture. So it's the foundation for European culture. It's the foundation for um, American culture. When we say America, we mean the United States of America. When you think about Greco-Roman culture and you think about the things that were the norm in that culture, you have to understand that you're seeing people reacting to having been abused and not healed from that abuse. Because only someone who has been abused would say that it's normal and natural and best to try to dominate another person. That it is okay to put another person in the category of other. When you place another individual or another living entity in the category of other, that is what it means to objectify that being. When you think about objectifying something, I always, what the, the um, example that I give to my teenage daughters is, you're looking upon it as though it is a sock. You're looking upon it as though it is a shoe. You're looking upon it as though it does not have life and does not have feelings. So when you objectify a being, what you do is you convince yourself that it's okay not to treat that being as though it has life and as though it has feelings. That's what it means to objectify something. Because your natural inclination is going to be to treat it with love. Life respects life naturally. So your natural inclination will be to love it and to treat it with kindness. In order to desensitize yourself to what you would naturally feel, then you objectify the person or you objectify the other living thing. This is the basis of Greco-Roman society. If you want to learn more about this, especially from a sociological and anthropological perspective, I strongly suggest the book Urugu by um, Mama Marimba Ani. Why You Are U G U can be found on Amazon or many, 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 many other websites or any African-centered bookstore. It is a it is not an easy read, but it is a very necessary read. And she goes into great depth and gives you great understanding of how this particular mindset came to be within Greco-Roman culture, how it flourished, and then its effects on the world at large. So I would strongly suggest you, Rugu. There are several videos on YouTube where she um, gives you um, the tools that you need to understand the book better. It is not an easy read, as I always say, but you can go, then go to the videos and be given the tools so that you can understand the book better. I think that one of the biggest issues with those of us who cling to and who attempt to um, um, base our lives upon African culture is that we have not purged ourselves of these Greco-Roman insane belief systems and these Greco-Roman insane ways of life. We haven't purged ourselves of those. So having not done that, what we do is we take parts of African culture and we practice them still from this same destructive mindset, from this same mad, this same insane mindset. I always say Olodumare is not Jehovah wrapped in, in a showcase. He is not, he, she, it is not Jehovah wrapped in, you know, any sort of African cloth. And African lifestyle is not Greco-Roman lifestyle wrapped up in African cloth. To be an African and to be victorious in our revolution does not mean that we will then be in the position that our oppressors are in now. This is not our lifestyle. That is not our goal because that is not the life that we were created to live. It is not our destiny. So we are not seeking to overthrow the government so that we can then become the government. 
because the government itself is corrupt. To govern another is a corruption in and of itself. It is not our ancient way. So I will, um, we have about three minutes left. I want to say that I do have two books available. You can find them at my Facebook store, which is under got to be Oshun, G-O-2, G-O-T, the number two, the letter B, O-S-H-U-N. And um, my first book is on our Akbani. It is an introduction to the Yoruba tradition, the Anago tradition. My second book is Shotito. Shotito is for those people who have already been practicing African spirituality and African culture who want a greater understanding of how to implement this into your modern life. And in Shotito, I discuss lots of the points that I am making today because we have to get those other ways of thinking out of our heads in order to begin to be sane again. So this is a great part of why I, a, a large part, I should say, of why I wrote Shotito. So my books are available. It got to be Oshun. I am available for spiritual consultations via the Great Mother Oshun. I'm also available for homeschooling consultations and holistic wellness consultations. We have about two minutes left. We're going to close out with a beautiful tune from another sister friend of mine, Akua Taylor, who can be found at akuataylor.com, A-K-U-A, Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R. The tune can also be found on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Bandcamp. It is called I Approve. I want all of you to listen. It's a beautiful tune to meditate to. And before we close out today, I do want to send the blessings of ecstasy, abundance, and bliss. The blessings of Oshun upon all of those who are listening and who are sending positivity to me. And I send the lessons of life to all of those who are sending me otherwise. Peace and love. I look forward to hearing you here again at 12 noon next Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. Got to be Oshun Radio.